What's up fam, I'm Brandon Rico and these are my updated thoughts and opinions on using the brand new M2 MacBook Air after using it for about two months, actually a little over two months. As a matter of fact, it's been two months from today, depending on when you're watching this, from when I posted my original first thoughts on the M2 MacBook Air. And spoiler alert, I mean, I just gotta say, I have been having a time with this machine. I'm really, really impressed on what Apple has been able to achieve with this brand new M2 chip, especially since according to the internet, this is supposed to be the underdog of the lineup. But from my experience, this underdog has been making some big dog noises. And just by reading the comments on my last video, I can tell that you guys have a lot of questions about if it's bite is just as bad as his bark. I really just wanna to get to the point and answer a lot of the questions that you guys have asked. Let's talk about it. Now I could sit here and throw you some tech specs and show you a bunch of graphs and numbers, but you've probably already seen all that on a lot of these other tech YouTube channels. Even when it comes to performing everyday tasks, the MacBook Air doesn't even break a sweat. I mean, I'm sending and responding to emails from clients, collaborators, and partners, browsing the internet all day, and even watching YouTube videos or occasional Netflix here and there. Very simple stuff. So for those of you who don't know, if you don't follow this channel like that, I had considered the iPad Pro as my main device for on-the-go music production for about three or four years straight. Like it was, it was a long run. But as my clientele started to grow and projects started to build up, I had been in need of something more updated that actually required a little bit more of a robust workflow. And even though iPad OS has gotten a slight refresh with some multitasking and, and windows and just, it's not, not quite for me. I have been looking for something more that the iPad just still hasn't been able to give me even after all this time. And that's mainly, Mac OS. There are some things that are still exclusive to Mac OS that I just need in my current workflow as of right now. Things like flagship DAWs or flagship softwares that I can't get even on iPad OS. So I needed something portable and sleek that I can use professionally on the go to make music and sound design. With a battery life that lasts all day and a slim portable new updated design and this color, <laughs> I was really, really happy to see that this got a refresh. And since we last talked about this, I have loaded this thing up with tons of software. And it just seems like the more I push this device, the more I'm convinced that I just won't have to upgrade for another five to six years. And that's exactly what I'm looking for in a production device. Now, I didn't go for the base model for quite a few reasons. And I feel like we've talked about that in the, in the comments of the other video a little bit, but here's some of the reasons why I spec this MacBook Air out the way I did. So for memory, I have the one terabyte version. This gives me a lot of storage space for downloading virtual instrument libraries, as well as exporting my projects when I'm finished with them. One of my biggest concerns when making this purchase was being able to pick this up, take it and take as least as possible and still be able to create in the most professional way possible while still complementing my workflow. So not having to remember to bring a external hard drive or dongles or anything like that was very important to me because sometimes I just wanna pick it up, create, put it down and come back to it later. So having that onboard built-in storage was very important. And also at the base model storage, I've heard that the read and write speeds aren't as great as some of the higher tier storage options. So even though you have two Thunderbolt 3 ports on this device, when it comes to transferring files back and forth, you might see some slower speeds compared to some of the higher storage specs for the M2 Air. The higher storage options, they just have a faster write speed. That's just, that's so you get what you pay for. Still on the topic of memory, I went with the 16 gigabyte variant option with the 10 core GPU. And I chose this because this just seems like the sweet spot for what I know my workflow is capable of under these conditions. At 16 gigabytes with the software that I run and I use intensively, 16 gigabytes is just seems like it runs smoothly. Both on the M2 MacBook Air, my M1 Mac Mini, and even my 2015 15 inch MacBook Pro. 16 gigs has always been the sweet spot for music production in my experience. Any more I feel like is just overkill for what I do. Any less is just, now you're pushing it. You're gonna see some stuttering, you're gonna see some throttling and some performance issues. Especially if you're using heavier, more CPU intensive libraries like the Native Instruments Contact Player or uh, any of the Arteria V collection, which so happened to be 
all of the things that I have. Some of the software that I have installed on the M2 MacBook Air are the Arteria V Collection plus Pigments. I have a lot of the Roly software like Equator 2, Strobe 2, and Cypher 2, as well as the brand new Complete 14 Ultimate. And that's a 700 gigabyte install. So pats on the back for me for having the foresight to get the one terabyte variant for this device. I mean, I already knew that I was gonna want those libraries on board. So it just made sense to get the one terabyte. Now, when it comes to speaker quality, these are not the best, but it's definitely not the worst. It's actually quite impressive given the fact that the speakers are now built into the chassis behind the keyboard and in front of the screen. It's like right in between, it's, it's weird, but it sounds really good. You would think that the placement of the speakers firing from that position would rattle the keys or even kind of have some weird muffle sound coming up out of this, the screen part, but no, it actually sounds, sounds decent. Again, music production on this device using those specific libraries that I just talked about has run very, very smoothly with the 16 gigabytes of RAM. But this MacBook Air does get warm, not hot, but a little warm to the touch when you're in the more intensive sessions making music or probably video editing too. And because of how thin this is at around 11.3 millimeters, you're gonna have some trade-offs when it comes to performance. This has no built-in fan to cool it off so it can have some effect on battery life. I'm coming from an older 2015 MacBook Pro and battery life on this, even though it's new, is 10 times better than anything I experienced with the older MacBook Pro. Doing everyday regular things like watching videos or browsing the internet and even emails and stuff like that, I'm still getting all day battery life actually sometimes even a day and a half depending on how often i'm using it for music production if i'm going really hard and really pushing this thing i'm getting about six to seven hours before i even have to plug this into a charger and the fact that i got this with the 67 watt fast charger i actually don't see a huge issue with that because after about 45 minutes to an hour of having this on the charger i'm back untethered again not to mention that they brought the magsafe charging back so even though you're plugged into the wall charger you can still have both your usb type c ports open and available for your accessories and you still have the option to use the USB Type-C ports for charging as well. But speaking of accessories, right quick, let's talk about some of my favorites for the MacBook Air. I've expressed this on my last video for the MacBook Air, but the color is just something I didn't even know I liked until I got it in hand. My first Apple device that actually introduced me to this colorway was my iPhone 13 mini. It's almost black, but definitely a certain type of blue that just on the eyes, it's a beautiful thing to look at. But it is anodized aluminum, so it is a fingerprint magnet. So if you have issues with aesthetics and you just don't want to see fingerprints on your devices, I wouldn't recommend the midnight blue at all, or even the space gray for that matter. That is something that I do miss from my OG silver MacBook Pro. The fact that I could just pick it up and touch it and I just don't feel like it's like smudges all over the place where I have to constantly clean it. But I, don't, I honestly, having an iPad has definitely desensitized me to fingerprints on my devices. It just means that you're using them. I don't have an issue with the aesthetics of fingerprints on my devices like that. I'm not I'm not that guy. So if that's important to you, you definitely want to stay away from the midnight blue. If you still want to go with the midnight blue, which is my personal favorite and you still want to protect the color and make sure it ages well, you might want to check out the book bookcase by 12 South. This is one of my newest obsessions for all of my devices. I actually have this for the iPad mini. In my opinion, this is definitely one of the best looking and most functional laptop sleeves that I've ever seen or ever owned. It looks and feels like a real book hard book cover and the inside is lined with a soft plush material that won't scratch or damage your MacBook Air, especially when you're carrying this on the go, putting this in and out of backpacks, hanging out at coffee shops, or even bouncing from room to room around the house. It has this hard shell leather casing. I'm telling you, it, it looks and feels like a book. Very close attention to detail on this too. So shout out to 12 South on this really beautiful piece of work. It's, uh, it's almost art. None of this stuff is sponsored by the way, but it is stuff that I just really, really like. But I will put links in the description. So if you wanna purchase any of these things based off of my recommendation, I would really appreciate if you use my links because I get a small kickback at no additional co cost to you. And it, it helps the channel and helps me keep making videos like this. My next favorite accessory for the MacBook Air just so happens to be the iPad mini. I've already explained in another video why this is one of my favorite devices. It's just extremely versatile. I really enjoy using this as a secondary screen 
lighting solution. Now you can use up to one additional external display with the MacBook Air, but this iPad mini or the iPad period is just a cheat code. I've been enjoying using the iPad mini as a wireless external display using Apple's built-in sidecar feature. Whenever I'm away from my main desktop and my workflow requires me to have multiple screens, it's really easy for me to set up the iPad mini as an external display or even use it together as a tag team system so that I can create files on the iPad and send it, airdrop it over to the MacBook Air. Having that type of versatility in the iPad ecosystem is just an experience that cannot be easily duplicated. For using external devices with my M2 MacBook Air, I'm using a dock case dongle. This dongle has everything. It even has a built-in smart display that displays the information about the devices that are connected to each port. Anywhere from transfer speeds to even the health and life of your connected devices. So if you're a tech nerd like me and you like to see that type of stuff and get pre-warned about data transfer speeds and how long it'll take for transfers to occur or even potential data corruption or SSD failures, it'll tell you that on the display. The build quality feels great and it has a nice weight to it. It has a really, really nice modern design and it's made of aluminum. Seven ports in total on this one, including some SD card slots. And it's just overall aesthetically pleasing as well. So if that's important to you, it just has this modern and futuristic design that won't break the bank. Now, when it comes to music production on the M2 MacBook Air, I just so happen to use several different types of MIDI keyboards. These are two of my favorite portable MIDI keyboards, which is the Arturia Micro Lab and the X Key Air. This is a Bluetooth MIDI keyboard that I use for my iPads. This one just happens to be a lot more thicker and more robust. It has a thicker key bed and it has like a rubber casing around the body. And it also houses its own USB cable that you don't have to keep up with the cables and stuff. It has houses it inside of the body. This is a USB A cable, so you will need a dongle or an adapter for the MacBook Air. But on the days that I don't feel like fumbling around with any cables, I'm actually using the X key air or more so recently, I just revisited the Lumi keys by Roly. I have a couple of reviews posted on this and I just started using this again. It's okay. I, I, I kind of started using this in my workflow and I just like the way it looks next to the MacBook air. This is also a wireless Bluetooth MIDI controller that if I don't want to, I don't have to use a uh, cable to plug this into my laptop and the great thing about this too is is that it has a USB type C port so if I want to use USB type C to C I can do that one of the most underrated features of the M2 MacBook Air is the updated high impedance headphone port. So for headphones, I'm using the Master and Dynamic MH40, and this is the wired version. I do have several of these headphones actually just lying around, and I actually own these before I even own the MacBook Air. And ironically enough, this particular colorway just matches the aesthetic with the MacBook Air perfectly. It's almost like a midnight blue, plus black finish. These have lambskin ear cups so that you get that perfect seal. It feels like skin to skin contact on your head when listening to music. So the ear cups are actually memory foam wrapped in lambskin. And the rest of the headphone is actually high quality leather lambskin on the inside and regular leather on the outside. Again, it's mostly made of aluminum and leather and it has this modern but still vintage looking design. I'm just a big fan of Master and Dynamic headphones and the sound quality, the sound quality does not disappoint. So if you wanna check out a pair of these, most definitely check the link in the description. So bringing it back to talking about performance when it comes to the M2 MacBook Air, when using Omnisphere and contact libraries and even the Arteria V collection, I'm not seeing a huge difference between performance I've seen on some MacBook Pros and even some higher end desktop situations. There was a lot of clamor and talk about thermal throttling and slower speeds and performance. And I just, at these specs, I just haven't experienced that. If you would like to see me make more beats with some of these flagship libraries like Omnisphere and Complete 14, let me know in the comments and let's, let's, uh, let's throw out some realistic test scenarios that you want me to try out and some expectations of a device of this stature. I'm here to tell you that I've been doing a lot on this M2 MacBook Air and I've been pushing this thing pretty hard and I'm not disappointed in my purchase at all. Do I wish I bought the base model M1 MacBook Pro? Nah, not really, because this is doing literally everything I needed to do. And then I was able to save more money and get more for what I pay for. 
Let me know what you think and let me know what type of test you want to see me run on this M2 MacBook Air. I'm Brandon Rico. Thanks for watching. Thanks for rocking with me and thanks for rocking with the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.